go. Welcome da, 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 da. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, th- go ahead, know. Jimmy. I'll let you start. I don't want to start in this one because you guys, everyone. Say, will... J- John's coming in hot. I don't. I was gonna say I don't know how John's gonna start off this show because it was a wild game, and I, th- <laughs> I don't think any of us thought that the final score was going to resemble anything close to what it does. Um, that fourth quarter, uh, well, part wow. of the, part of the third quarter, and then that fourth quarter. It looked like complete. It looked like the teams just did a flip, and the the Nuggets wanted absolutely. Uh, sorry, the the Jazz wanted absolutely. Yeah, no, you got it. You go back, Jimmy. The Nuggets wanted absolutely. I always mix those two teams. You do what you think is right, buddy. It doesn't matter. Um, wanted absolutely nothing to do with this with this game. It felt like in the end, especially Jokic. I mean, Malone literally punished him. He took him out of the game. I think Jokic quit on a play. Malone said, "You're done for the night for the for the day." sat his ass down, and just took the L. I mean, it almost felt like that's what he was like. Bench, he benched him one rebound short of a triple-double. Wild. And you know what? Good on Malone for doing that because it, it did feel like Jokic kind of checked out there, and Malone yeah. was doing yeah. none of it. He was frustrated well, to hell, and he said, screw, screw well, it. We're gonna, we're, win or lose with, with the guys that we have on the court right now. And, and sure enough, they took a massive L. They, they lost for sure. I mean, you need Jokic. He's almost too talented to take out. But um, credit. It was over at that point, though. All credit you know, to the Celtics for coming out the way they did in that fourth quarter. Tatum, Brown, um, you know, you got a you got a you know good second half of those players. And our boy Grant Williams stepping up big. Yeah, I, I was waiting I for uh, I was I was I'm waiting for the Bobby uh, just way. I was waiting for Bobby Manning's uh you know bit when Grant got in the face of uh, whoever that was who fouled Romeo. Oh, it was to. Green, Jamichael Green. Jamichael Green. Turning, turning, turning point. Turning, turning point. Oh my god, Todd. And you know, your guy Romeo. I thought your guy Romeo kind of put a little pep in their step. I thought he Romeo did. was. I thought Romeo was good tonight too. And I, see, this is this is the thing about this game. I liked Romeo when, tonight. When we're talking about guys who played well, we're not talking just about Tatum. We're not talking just about Jalen Brown. We're talking about some of those the guys on on the side who, for the most part, have not made an impact in this game. Grant Williams, I mean, only had two points, but was a plus 23. And for once, that was not a misleading stat. When you look at how he was able to defend Jokic, how he was able to make hustle plays, like the one that we're just talking about where that wound up with uh, Romeo getting fouled and making a couple free throws. You start going down this roster beyond your big two uh, of Tatum and Brown, and you see player after player after player making a contribution. And for me, the one thing that it all says is that this team finally, finally, finally decided to fight. They finally decided to, to fight but, to win games instead of just letting things play out the way they were. They fought to be a winner, not just assuming it's going to happen. So that's the question. Was this a Celtics fought game or Denver quit game or both? I think it was kind of I both. Think was, I think it was both. Yeah. I, think it was, I, I think it was definitely both. But yeah. I think it was more about the Celtics fighting than it was Denver quitting. Because to be honest, I thought the way the Celtics fought – was a factor in Denver quitting. This is this has been one of the concerns that a lot of people, when they think about the Denver Nuggets making a deep playoff run, have. Does this team have the mental toughness to hold its ground when things get rough, when things become a little gritty and grimy? And the, the play we're, we're talking about this earlier, and we we're joking about Grant Williams and that turning point, but I swear, when he got in, in Jamichael Green's face, that is when I knew – there's no way they're going to lose this game because that's something that Grant, they need <laughs> players to actually stick up for one another. Like, like I was saying earlier, you they need to fight for, for this this stuff, man. They can't they can't just assume that because they've been to the finals, conference finals three of the last four years, that shit is just going to automatically happen. You got to fight for that. And this was one of the few times where regardless of what was happening in the game, they were determined to fight to the bitter end. And it was good to see. It was yeah. good, and and it reminded me of, of the Minnesota game a little bit when they went down big to Minnesota, and then they clawed, you know, Marcus Smart kept him in there as best he could, and then the second half they woke up and they again were determined not to go down that way. So again, you know, Sherrod, I think you nailed it. You know, they're fighting for each other for for almost for the first time this season. It feels like I mean, really, we've been waiting for examples of these guys having each other's backs, whether it's on the court or off the court. You know, speaking to the media, whatever it may be, you're you're looking for that support, whether it's player to player player to coach um we didn't get a lot i know of 
I know. For, first, Jalen gave the bucket to Jason last game, and and how much ink was spilled over that. Oh my god! Hey again, was... The stuff we've talked about over oh the last. Oh my god! Week. Here comes. Oh, he gave it to him. So first, I wonder, okay. I, I, hey, I, but John, remember, these guys remember, each other? that's an assist. That's an assist for Jalen. So let's not. Yeah, it's not true. totally altruistic. He does get an I assist. Know. Out I of do that. want to say good morning to Bobby Manning. How are you? Uh, yeah. Good Hello. morning. Welcome. Yep. Hey, so again, the stuff we've talked about over the last week, whether it be the team's collective uh, disdain for the officiating or uh, just their whatever it is against the media that they're hating the garden around. report. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> I guess that stuff has added up and it made this more cohesive, uh, you know, fighting group. And, you know, Tristan Thompson's return has played some role in that as well. Mm -hmm. They have just come out here and battered teams defensively. I know we looked at that Charlotte win last Sunday. And said, yeah, it's Charlotte, 86 points, whatever. Now to hold Denver at 87 was the uh, performance of the season. Uh, just an absolutely incredible win. Probably their best since last season. I, I Again, I'm sorry. I am a little dubious. Like, I agree on the both factor. I just, it's hard. The defense to, was legit it, in that it's fourth hard to quarter. Have, yeah. It's hard. It's hard. The, the fourth quarter is its own game. Take that fourth quarter and, and, and store it. Celtics absolutely dominated both sides. That was exerting pressure getting Denver to quit, uh, playing better, be all around better offense. Absolutely. Everything that led up until then, it felt like it was one uh, hot streak from Denver, a few three-pointers away from the Celtics slumping their shoulders and just going home. You know, like it, it was – it, yeah, there was the a opposite lot, happened. There was a, it was the opposite happened, which is great. There was a lot of bad. They had – 12 assists, I think 13 assists through three quarters, a lot of, a lot of dribble, 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 jacking shots, uh, just not a very cohesive offense. And Denver just wasn't playing well. And it was, you know, Celtics were staying in the game. So it felt like it could go either way, but hats off to the Celtics. They literally just absolutely stepped on their throats in the fourth quarter. So they get all the credit for that. That was incredible, but I didn't know which way this one was going to go after three. I mean, the Celtics, you know, as Sherrod said it a million times, and you could see the difference in it. The amount of threes that they took, so few of them were inside outside. It was just perimeter, you know, passing and jack up a three. Th those are those lazy, like, I don't want to be out here this afternoon. If they go, great. If they don't, I'm just going to go home and pack it in because it's a matinee and I didn't feel like playing anyway sort of game. So it really, it had that vibe. And then, uh, like I said, you know, as we said, they just, they turned up the heat there late in that third quarter, and they made it really hard. And then Denver just absolutely folded. And, and what I liked about this game and what I liked about the win was that in a game where they could not hit a three-pointer for the life of them, I think they shot like just about 20%. I mean, that's a game that they lose like 99% of the time. But to their credit, they decided to attack the rim, score in the paint. They outscored the Nuggets tonight in the paint, you know, a team that has a guy like Jokic out there. Um, and to me, that I mean, that that's – that's what you want to see because earlier in the season, they might just stay Jack and threes and lose the game. But to their credit, they figured out what wasn't working for them today. Was the that was the story of the game. Maybe because and, and they you know, were that day game, you know, matinee sort of sloppy shooting, whatever the reason was, I give them all the credit in the world for, you know, sort of yep. changing the way that they were going to go about their offense today and attacking to attacking the nuggets yep. to the point where they, you know, sucked the life out of them. Right, but the other thing, too, that, that we would be remiss in not talking about is the fact that the Nuggets didn't have Jamal Murray, which, again, taking advantage of opportunities that you have nothing to do with. That was one of them. And I thought the Celtics did a good job of forcing others other than, than Jokic to make plays and, and get things done. You know, Michael Porter Jr. is having a great year, and, and so is Aaron Gordon. But you, you get the sense with those two guys that at some point, you know, they're going to come a little bit closer to earth and play – closer to what, where their talent is as opposed to where they're at now, which is way beyond, I think, either of those guys' talent level. And the Celtics forced Denver to, frankly, rely on others to make plays and make shots that normally Jamal Murray would make. And, again, that that's not saying – that doesn't take away from the win. That's simply acknowledging the fact that the Celtics had a built-in area that they could exploit, and to their mm -hmm. credit, they were able to do that. And that's something we haven't seen them always do. We've seen them play – not so great teams or good teams with, that were missing a key player, and they were never able to m take advantage of that missing void on the opposing team. This was an, one of those games where they did just that and got yeah. a win that it, I think I, I think we've already 
I think we're all in agreement. This is arguably their best win of the season and maybe one of the better wins they've had in the last couple of yeah, years. What do you well, say after the last game, Sherrod? It's got to be defense. And this is their to. potential defensively. It really is. I came into this year saying this could be the best defense in the NBA. And it really can be. Oh, I, they Bobby, just, no. They just no. – they have to lock in. They have to give the effort required, and they have to be connected on that end. And you know what? I, I said after last game Ugh. that he was going to be moving Thompson to the starting lineup. I actually like him with the second unit now that I've seen it for a few games. Thank I'll you. surrender on that one. Yeah, because Thank you. the upside of Rob's ball movement with the starting unit and how good they've been able to get defensive rotations and all that stuff with the bench guys in – that's the right fit for both of them. You know, Thompson's been really good with the bench. I thought Rob was fantastic with the starters tonight, plus 17. I Just the right center rotation. They got to hammer down. Mixing Grant a little bit there at the four when needed. And I think Brad Stevens has found his rotation. You know, Fournier will be mixed in with that bench group when they get back. It was just a nice fluid rotation that allowed them to dominate right. Denver's bench. Before I make Bobby say that one more time, because I want everybody to hear it uh, again, <laughs> uh, I do want to tell everybody about uh, the lo our our sponsor, uh, Locker Room. And again, I know a lot of people are using this app and they're going in there and they're talking to people, but this is a direct sponsor of ours, okay? Uh, we are in business with Locker Room and it is super important to us that you join us after, not because, uh, not just because... Like I said, it's it's good for us, but we love having you. It's been fun. We've done it three games now. Uh, we've been packed up over 100 people each time. We want to get those numbers up. We've heard from a ton of you. You're extremely active in the chats. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your voices. So download it at uh, the iOS store. We know there's an issue uh, with uh, Android, but that's going to be fixed soon, we believe. So um, download it, iOS, uh, and join us afterwards. We'll be uh, putting a link in the chat. Uh, we'll trickle over there. We'll chat with you in a little bit. It is Sunday, so we'll keep this game on the shorter side, and then we'll head over to the locker room. We'll chat a little bit, and we'll let everybody go uh, on their way uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoons, maybe catch the 18th, you know, uh, last couple of holes of the Masters. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Or do both, we'll, whatever it is. But, yeah, Bobby, you were saying something about Tristan Thompson's second unit, and, John, you're right. I can't remember. No, it, no I'm just I, kidding. I, think, I think that's the right fit. <laughs> and now I, I want to throw this at you guys too. What are we at? What are we at? April 11th now? The Celtics are the fifth best defense in the NBA since April 1st, since April got started. So some of these trends we're looking at, whether it's Tatum being a 50, 40, 90 guy this month, their defense turning it up. They're starting to extend now, you know, about midway into the month. And we're seeing really encouraging trends with this team. They have the let's see, fourth best net rating in basketball this month. I, I mean, they've just been a different team since the calendar flipped. And it's it's been about getting different guys back. It's been about finding their rotations, obviously, in certain Robin of the starting lineup now. I think, what are we talking about now record-wise since that happened? Six and three or I something like that? Rob? Yeah, and he that missed like one of those games. Or something I think like it's eight that. and two. Yeah. Eight yeah, and two, two. So, like, they found their rotations. I, I was tossing around that Thompson thing for a few games, so I'm going to surrender on that one. That. What they have right now is going to be what works. Uh, well, I mean, look, things will change a little bit when Fournier comes back too, and that's going to make a huge difference. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think Tristan Rowling – look, I, I think that's what – I'm not beating a dead horse on it. I think we thought Rob's potential and playmaking ability unlocks potentially the offense a little bit with that first unit. That's what you want to see. But then you need – again, when you didn't have – those couple of games, you know, when Tristan was out and Rob was on an island by himself and we're sitting here trying to talk ourselves into Cornette and Wagner, like, I mean. No one was talking themselves into Wagner. Uh, I feel like some people were. but Preseason vibes. Yeah. Pre vibes. I feel like some people, right. This it was like Vegas League vibes, preseason vibes. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You um, might have something here. But, you, I mean, the value of Tristan, we've been saying about it even early in the year when I was saying, when you know, he deserves the third most minutes behind Tyson Rob. It was, you still need that guy. You need that banger. You need a guy to come in there and do what he does. And it's perfect. You're right. I love it in there. And that second unit energy off the bat. It's a perfect bench player, right? Uh, in yeah. fact, both he and Smart are perfect bench players, but the Celtics are just too imperfect to be able to have, uh, you know, Smart not start for them right now. Uh, but you love guys like that who just come in and up that energy, you know. Um, and so Tristan absolutely has been uh, great in that regard. 
uh, there. And, uh, and again, when Fournier comes back, I think that unlocks things a little bit better. Uh, Josue, yeah. we haven't heard from you at all, buddy. So I was going to uh, say, no, no, just let me, let me get right in here. Uh, <laughs> I love how th th that puts a huge smile on John's face because I give you credit, John, you've been, you've been asking for this since, I don't know about Christmas time, right guys? Like this, this team needs two last Christmas centers, just two solidified centers yeah. and everyone else plays whatever's left behind, like whatever, right garbage time minutes is left like this team needs to be in the stretch because robert williams needs to. that's going to help him progress and here we are i mean what two months or three months whatever it was you know since since robert's been getting significant minutes but it was always not you know consistent now without daniel tice on this team it's crystal clear but but we're seeing the results and and i i think for those couple of games where people are like well what happened to robert you know he's not you know he's not doing what he was what he was doing before I think it's easy to overlook things when he's not, you know, throwing down alley oops every other play. You know, uh, again, I feel like teams have, have zeroed in on him and they've rattled him a bit from, from that aspect of the game. But you look at the box score, double double machine, uh, you know, affecting the game, especially down the stretch, especially in those moments when the Celtics really need him. I mean, yeah. all of that attitude that we saw when he when he got that dunk. Well, credit to Jason Tatum, of course, for getting that steal. But yep. Like, yep. that's the kind of energy that the, that the 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 starting unit is going to always need down the stretch regardless yeah. of what the box score looks and look at right. the box score today was it 10 10 and oh, well, not double double but 10 and 8 he was 10 know, and 8 10 and 8 two blocks you know six minutes couple of blocks but again you know that him with that with that starting unit there's a big difference for me for sure right his his bad games are like good games of old you know like we saw that little dip right. and i was worried because you know i really did and we were joking that mb broke him but he really looked like that game shook him for a couple of games After that game right yeah he he, he did not look right broke. He didn't even look right for part of the, the beginning of this game, uh, and, he, and, he, and he pulled it off right. But a couple of things, the two centers, but it also allows you to use Grant in, in more useful ways as well, you know? Um, yeah. And so obviously he was uh, super useful tonight. You know, I mean, we joke about it all the time because the stat sheet looks ridiculous. You it looks joke like, about it, John. Come on. That's your thing. Oh, I'm the only <laughs> person that points out that Grant Williams regularly scores zero points in 23 minutes. I'm the only guy. I'm the one guy. I'm really picking on him. No, I, I just I mean, had <laughs> issues with saying he was useless because he does do certain things out there that are very useful. He was used some sure. today. You Useful. He, I mean, <laughs> use some. Use some. Some. No, I mean, absolutely. He was, a, he was a bomb, yeah. right? He's I another just, matchup guy. I mean, this is what the center yeah. position on this team's all about: matchups. Yeah. He he's not that much shorter that with against Jokic that he just com is devastated when they line up. And when he got in there, he was able to put enough power into that post up matchup that it frustrated Jokic, and he was great on Jokic. Took him yeah. out of the game. Like, he, he's he's a role player, and this was one of those games where he played his role about as perfectly as he could play it. Hustle plays, defense, doesn't have to be a great rebounder, but you have to be a good positional defender, and I thought he did that. If a guy, one of your guys gets, you know, hit hard, be the enforcer. Be the guy that talks smack to guys. If you get tossed, guess what? It's a little bit different if you get tossed versus Marcus Smart. As yeah, far as, exactly. You know, those so are the trade-offs you'll make. Yeah. Exactly. It's like like when he got into Michael Green's face, I was hoping it's, that there would be a pushing, yeah. shoving match. You're Just, for, I'm for I'm for having an enforcer. Hell yeah. yeah. So I'm fourth yeah. line goon. I'm Your fourth line goon great. going against the first line player, you take that trade off, right? Yeah. I was surprised every great. day. And I love it. especially on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even Jermichael was like, yo, is this guy serious right now? Yeah, crazy? exactly. Exactly. Like, I love that. I love yeah. that energy. No, I love that Grant. We know energy. Grant can talk. His own teammates, I think, or was it him who admitted that? He Too much. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. they're like, Jesus, dude, you're, you're like a rookie. Like, shut yeah, but up. How funny yeah. But the there's value in that. And we saw that tonight, today. <laughs> I, 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 all smack. I think he talks also in that, like, though. annoying little brother sort of way, not just right. like that, right. Yeah, yeah, just the, way, yeah. <laughs> the way you pulled up with Jermichael Green was funny, though. It wasn't that, like, yo, you better stop it. It was more that, like, you know, hey, man, you better cool it out. You know, yeah. <laughs> and Jamichael's like, I am going to be so mad. <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't want to get like, angry. <laughs> Jamichael's like, this I is love your it. Enforcer? Love this it. is your guy. This guy. <laughs> this the guy. The guy who almost went to Harvard. This guy. He's like, what happened to that? The, the German big guy. What happened to yeah. him, man? Easy Harvard, right? No, but it's good. It was uh, you. You love seeing it. You you love it. It doesn't matter the sport, even in a fake tough guy sport like basketball. Absolutely love seeing guys 
back up other guys. They you go know, on Denver's head a little bit. They really I did. love that. Yep. I love that. They you did. get in guys' faces. I love when a guy goes to pick him up and other people swat their hands away. Like, nope, that's my guy. Get the f yep. away. Yep. I, I'll take that all the time. You know, I love. I love that attitude because you know what? It just a, it irks them. You know, you mm-hmm. think about it. It gets under your skin a little bit, even if it. You know, whether you're intimidated or not, sure. it's like we're not friends right now. You know, you want to get that especially, vibe. It's too especially it's a, especially during a matinee. Yeah, it's a chummy game as it is. The NBA's gotten very chummy. You want to see a little bit of that. Right. I've noticed this too now when it comes to this team and game after game, I'm looking at points in the pain. And that used to be a big thing with this team. They're, they're too perimeter oriented. They never get inside, this and that. Jimmy alluded to in the opener. Every single game now, you look at that stat, they're right there with the other team or they're head and shoulders above the other team when it comes to points in the pain. Not only because they're getting there now more often since March began, but they have a hard interior defensively. Like you're running in the Thompson banging bodies with him. You're running in the Rob shot blocking ability. And, you know, you obviously have long wings next to those guys. You've talked about this too, John. They're playing the way on both ends of the floor that, that they want to. More wings so. with length. You know, great interior defenders. I, I, again, this team didn't have an identity for much of this year you know, between double bigs and all this stuff that they've tossed around and guys moving in and out. We're starting to see it now. We really are. Yeah. I, I get better. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, you'd love to see them by the way, really kind of, you know, string it together. Now you got, you got a Laker team that's kind of limping along here. This would be a nice little, you snuck out the Denver win. You take another one there. All of a sudden you're rolling a little bit and then four is going to come. Yeah. yeah. Portland, Portland rather coming into Portland's next, right? Then the Lakers, yeah. is that yeah, right? Portland, Portland, Lakers. Yeah. Portland Lakers. Sorry. Um, and then you come and, home and then and, Fournier is playing and you know, uh, you know, you could again. What's the goal here? Get out of the set. If you know, get out of the seven seed for the love of God. You know, this like, is the stretch run here. Yeah, this yeah, really is. You got to get yeah, into that six five situation. You don't want to be in a play in situation, but this is really where you want to kind of solidify your position here. So you know, good on them. Uh, any anything else right now? I was going to move the conversation along. Did anyone have anything while we were rolling here? You no, know, I, I, I was just going to add on like what you, what you just said. Like you, you don't, the Celtics need to get out of this, uh, the, the king of uh, that tournament. You don't want to be the king of the playing tournament. <laughs> right. <laughs> they need to get off of that. So yeah. that's I, how you do No, that. anything can happen there. You're in one game and something goes fluky. Your, your season's over. Right. Uh, you do not want to be in that position. Yeah. One thing we did want to see tonight heading into this game, because I'm sure like a lot of Celtics fans had, especially with Fournier out with COVID, um, a lot of Celtics fans had crippling FOMO watching Aaron Gordon and the Nuggets run off. Was it seven or eight straight wins? I forget. Eight. It was eight. Eight, yeah. right? Eight straight wins. And, uh, you know, this every basketball writer and everybody covering the team or just watching the team is talking about how the Nuggets unlocked Gordon, how he'd been in jail in the with uh, in Orlando. And, oh, now his t- talents are shining through and blah, blah, blah. And you're seeing the box scores and you're seeing the highlights. And Jimmy's watching YouTube clips of Gordon Duncan. <laughs> And he's and all bummed Tatum out. Gave him the business. And then Tatum no, friggin <laughs> moved it on him. No, I mean, and then I honestly, I swear, I was in and out. I've got kids. I was running around. I was watching and this and that. And I, for a moment, I, the first few minutes of the game up until like first quarter, I had to check. I was like, is Gordon out tonight? Is today too? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't notice he existed. Okay. And that's like the worst thing. You, the, the, Gordon go, playing the role of Grant Williams today was Aaron, was Aaron Gordon. Like I didn't need, I didn't even know he was there, you know, right. like at all, except the most notable thing he did was get dunked on by Tatum. He was yeah. invisible, invisible, right? Yeah. Yeah. He a was. non-factor. And so like, you yeah. feel better about this as a Celtics fan, right? Cause you're like, this is the guy I didn't mortgage my future for. Like no, I can live with that. Especially the way smart's playing. Yeah. 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 I mean, that yeah. was the tough breaking point. Like, do you want to give up that core piece for this guy who's largely a question mark, at least when it came to his history there, and you can project what he would grow into for years to come, but smart was the better option, and that's why they didn't do it. Yeah, I mean, part of it, I think, you know, when, when you're without your starting point guard and, and Jamal Murray, I think that throws everything off, especially for a yeah. new guy like Gordon, who is probably still learning a lot about this team with limited practices, and now he's got Campazzo in there, you know, doing his thing, running around, like, Shout out to Campazza, man. He's like a ball of energy out there. He's tough, man. Yeah, he's, he's tough. I'm a big fan of him, yeah. I think that Argentina. A bit of a yeah. disconnect for a guy like Gordon who, you know, as Bobby mentioned, you know, he's kind of limited in what he can do out there offensively, you know, especially, you know, being on the new team. So 
Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, he was he was borderline invisible, like you said, and, and except for that that yam that he got. <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't give I can't give him the out that he not wasn't having invisible Jamal yeah. was. I can't give Gordon the out that not having Jamal around kind of hurt his game because remember the primary facilitator for that team is Jokic, who right. once again right. leads like the NBA in touches. So the ball is literally in his hands, damn near more than anyone else in the NBA. Forget about just the roster. I just thought Aaron Gordon just didn't. To John's point, he went Casper the friendly ghost on us. Today. Yeah, he was no we we knew he was out there, but we really didn't see him. <laughs> right, we really didn't see him. Other than again, his most notable accomplishment yeah. in however minutes he played, I think he played like 30, 35 minutes, something like that, was him getting was, dunked on by it. Jason Tatum. That's yeah, it. he played thirty one minutes, and and like and and he saw it coming a mile away. Like he oh, did. Yeah. Like he did. I'm coming to dunk on you now, and he did. It. <laughs> he even followed him on the play, John. He uh, followed Tatum on the dunk. That they didn't call something. it. By the way, MVP of this chat is everybody who's been saying that Joe Sway's in the dojo right now. I freaking love it. <laughs> I got that last week, too. Someone just said Thai restaurant, which Kung I can Fu get Sway. down that. <laughs> Yo, Mr. Miyagi, give me, give, me, give me an hour to talk to you guys. That's it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that is a great Joe, look. Joe Sway's in the dojo. I love it. Yeah, this um, is what it's all about right here. No, it's great. But uh, so, again, as a Celtics fan, you know, you feel a ton better watching this game because – Again, a lot of these guys, unless you're Bobby and you're up there watching friggin' League Pass, you know, till four in the morning, uh, and you know, and then waking up at eight, bleary eyed, you know, and then you know, d watching what you DVR'd and missed. Most Ain't people generous. aren't watching. <laughs> most Josh people. With that. No, but most people aren't watching every single game, every single team. You see flashes. You see them when they come to town. Sure. You catch national TV matchups, the TNTs. You're not getting lots of those with Orlando. So how many full games are people seeing of Aaron Gordon uh, in, you know, in Boston or really out of market? Not tons, right? Yeah. You see right. him, you see some. So when you see a full game, you're like, oh, you get a better sense of like what is everything they do. But when the Celtics played him, he was dog shit too, you know, like so. Well, like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go that far because I'm not saying awesome. he is. I yeah. I thought it was I I was on the side of making the trade. All I'm saying is, if you're a Celtics well, fan, no, it's it's, now, it's not about that either. You've now he's, seen him a couple times and not been super impressed. That's all I'm saying. He's a phenomenal fit in Denver. He yeah. just is, and that that eight and zero stretch was the real deal. He played well for that entire run that they had after yeah. the deadline, and then he had a stinker tonight, which allows us to do this thing here. I, the question was whether if you were swapping out smart and giving up all that you had to as Boston and then putting him in that spot, taking away your playmaker. I mean, Denver has three or four great playmakers and he never has to do a single thing in that role. All of a sudden here, he'd be doing a ton of that like he was in Orlando. And then you lose everything that you would with smart. So it's always that uneven, like what is Denver giving up? What is Boston giving right. up? And really all Denver gave up was a, a draft pick that wasn't playing for them. A uh, wing who was hurt all year and was a contract they wanted to get rid of anyway, and a pick in like 2025. So they, you know, for now got him essentially for free. And right. Boston was that going to have to give up a real important rotation piece to get him? So that was the unevenness of that situation that, uh, you know, ended up with the result that it did. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's uh, that, that's 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 a lot of truth there. You know, the two completely different roles. We were talking whether he came to the Celtics and then compared to him going to to the Denver Nuggets. But I just think this was such a, an important win for the Celtics team because again, you know, we talk about the West Coast road trip and the fact that they've had this newfound attitude the Celtics have right the last five days was like us against them. And you know what? We're taking the show on the road. We're going to prove to everyone. And we just rattled the uh, MVP candidate, you know, or at least my favorite uh, candidate for MVP in, in Jokic. And I think that there's a lot of significance in that because, uh, you know, obviously that team, you know, what he does out there, his attitude reflects a, a lot of what that, that team is about. And when he's disconnected to the, from the team like that, I mean, you just saw that their entire approach or their attitude or their, you know, coming out of the timeout was just deflated. I mean, that yeah. took a, a lot out of Denver. And you have to give the Celtics credit for that, regardless if, if you look at the score and say, oh, well, Celtics, they didn't grab their first lead until the fourth quarter or whatever it was. Yeah, but the Celtics hung around and they got to the free throw line and they were aggressive in their offensive approach, whereas before they weren't, you know, they would be settling for three pointers. And before they would have Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum save the day. But no, that wasn't the case. It was everyone going in the game, right? You know, 20 plus points in the paint before the fourth quarter. They finished with, with what, 56 points in the paint, you know, just being aggressive, regardless if they were down by double digits or not. 
and it paid off. You know, obviously the offense picked up in the fourth quarter in that second half, but the defense also was also uh, protecting the paint as well. I thought they did a really good job with Jokic or whoever it was, whether it was Jermichael Green getting frustrated, trying to get his shots, you know, those high percentage shots that they usually get so easily. The Celtics made it hard for them, and they were really in their own way, it seemed like, at least uh, before they gave up the lead as a whole. Regardless, though, I'm still surprised Coach Malone benched him that early. What was it, five minutes left in the fourth quarter? I mean, I get it. He was frustrated. His attitude was was out the window. But I was surprised we didn't see him at least a minute later where they it was still, what, a nine-point game they got into at one point? And I'm like, man, they're really going to bench Jokic for the, for the night. But he got he was in the doghouse. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I thought Jokic checked out even before he got benched. Uh, he was still yeah. putting he up Jokic's numbers. He yeah, he was still getting his numbers, but he there there was a very he, and he's a pretty laid back guy to begin with. But he seemed ridiculously laid back. I mean, you you would have thought that he had this pressing matter that had you know that this basketball game was interfering with him getting to wherever the hell he needed to get to. Um, <laughs> there, there, he can't you can't be like that. At any point in the season. And I know that to some extent they feel like they're playing with house money because they've won eight in a row and the Celtics have not played great basketball this year. But they left the door open for the Celtics to come in and give the Celtics credit. They didn't allow the moment to just pass them by. They grabbed a hold of it, took it for their own, got the win, did all the little things that, that we haven't talked about, uh, that we've been talking about the last few weeks, like turnovers. I think they had like nine for the yeah. entire game. And we, we've seen some games where they'd have more than that in like the first half. And the fact that when they did turn the ball over, they weren't letting Denver get out and get easy buckets. Denver, I think, had maybe four fast break points or something like that. So, and the bench, even the Celtics bench wound up outscoring Denver's uh, second unit, which again, the game, some of that had to do with the game at the very end getting a little bit out of hand and the Celtics taking control. But the point is, they did so many of the little things that they have been completely crapping the bed up to this point in the season at doing against a quality team on the road. And and I, there, there's no way you can really just de-emphasize how important it was for them to beat a quality team on the road playing good basketball and not relying on the damn three-point shot. To me, that was yeah. one of the best parts about this win was that yeah. it wasn't a game that they offense carried them. It wasn't a game where they had to shoot the hell out of the ball in order to win. They shot like crap most of the game. Yeah. But they dug down. Point. They made – they made it more of a fight than than a, than a flurry of threes, and it got the win. This is this is again one of the better wins they've had certainly this year, maybe in the last couple of years. Seven three pointers, Rod. Yeah. A month, a month ago, they had to drain at least eighteen, you know, for them to pull out this win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Am I the only one looking at face shades, or, or are you guys looking at it too? Looking at what? I only I I got I can only see like the like a piece of Joe Sway's head. It must just be on my. Yeah, no, it's just you. Joe Sway's in the I dojo. Just, he looks good. I thought you were fixated on the, the drapes. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, did you pop the edible before this, man? You tripping, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, did you say edibles as in plural, not singular, right? Yeah, right, right. Hey, it's Sunday. You know, that's how I relax. Yeah, right. <laughs> For sure. After the win. But, uh, I um, we haven't talked about Jason Tatum enough this show. And, uh, I, I think, like I said, yeah, go ahead. You start. Well, you know, double, double, you know, three straight games of ten rebounds for him. I think he's being a lot more active out there. He's being a lot more aggressive on both ends. He's not just chucking shots. I mean, it went to the line eight times tonight. Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with some of the comments that you know were said about him by the national guys or, or what, but it does feel like he's playing with a little extra something. Um, you know, and it, it, if you look at his, you know, just game logs, you know, he's dropping, you know, 23, 24 minimum a game feels like now, like fairly regularly. Uh, obviously he had 53 last, last game. And I know that meant a lot to him. He couldn't wait to, to post, to post that on Instagram. I think he was probably on the team bus, but, um, I just shout out to, shout out to Tatum. And he, he's playing like the player they need him to be, um, if they want to go anywhere. Um, so yeah. he's starting to, I mean, it's, listen, it's not a 180, but it, you know, these, these are the way you start to trend in the right direction. They've won, you know, three straight now. Like you guys said, they can maybe build a little momentum here on the road and, and see what they've got. So When yeah. he's attacking off the dribble now, he's still drawing contact. But at least even when he misses, he's following through on a play. It's a follow-through miss or it's a finish. He's not just getting knocked off his stride as easily as we've seen in the past. And he needs to keep doing that uh, because the thing that, that, that I think happened tonight was because he was being so effective at getting to the, to the rim – 
it opened things up for his mid-range and three-point game. And so those shots were either in rhythm or open, I thought, more than they normally are. And he did a good job of, of mixing it up, keeping that Denver defense off balance, making taking advantage of whatever defender was on him. If it was somebody like Will Barton, you know, he who he knows he can shoot over, uh, he did that. If it was someone that's a little bit bigger, take him off the dribble, like Aaron Gordon, and finish at the rim. It was This was a... a a classic case study, and I'm better than everyone on your team. And by the end of the night, I'm going to show you why. And they he doesn't always do that. Right. They finally ran. I mean, if Tommy was alive and he was watching this team all year, you you know exactly what he would be saying about this run, team. Run, 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 run. run, run. I, yeah. They are just so stagnant in the half court sometimes. And then and they you just can't even blame Brad for that because if you're watching him on the sideline, you see Brad is like, yeah, oh, yeah. to get out and run. And the only guy who was doing that early in the year, getting them moving in that sense, was Peyton Pritchard, which is why he made the impact uh, that he did in yeah. that portion of the season. J- Jalen uh, tonight. A yeah, and Jalen tonight, even like he he was the one who got them going late in that third from a pace perspective. This yeah. team needs to sprint a little bit. Like they do I not think. have the half court offensive prowess. Do you think to Tatum be was playing with that urgency team. the first three quarters, though? I felt to me no, that he the was, first half he no, was stuck. Nobody, nobody was. He was stuck in a lot of dri- dribble, 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 ISO bad shots. I mean, I I didn't like it, and then he got but aggressive he and he started do he started get to get downhill. Yeah, 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 he got to the rim, and that I think he was a little. I mean, also don't forget, I mean. It felt like he might not even play today with some sort of sickness, so maybe he was feeling it a little bit. Yeah, start. maybe. Maybe started slow. Yeah. yeah. High altitude okay. thing, too, is real there. Yeah. Right. That is, yeah oh, my God, God is it real. About that. Oh, my yeah, God. Is, oh, have you been out there? I've never been out there. Oh, my God. Yes. Is, yes. I, it is oh, real. I'm like, I can't, no matter, I could drink like eight, like 10 gallons of water. I can't stay hydrated. I swear. Every time oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, the altitude kill. And yeah. Yeah. some people. Suitable? Some people get dizzy. I've been out there a few times. I mean, I covered the World Series in 2007 when the uh, when the Sox were out oh, there. Yeah, the, the Rockies. Plus, you know, yeah, yeah. I've been out there a few times for uh, recreational reasons. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, you're and breathe out there when you're no in the Broncos. I, in I, the I, mountains, I've covered yeah. Pat's Broncos out there a bunch too. So I've been I've been out there a few times. I, every time I'm out there, I'm like, you know, yeah. like, and some and people really get that. it in the head. You know, like they get lightheaded. It's it's definitely real. Oh, and that makes us. I mean, one look, all the look at the Patriots' practice. record in Denver for like their lives. It's always you know they friggin' yeah. Uh, it's a tough place to win for road yeah. teams. It always has been. Right. So that makes this one just that much more imp- impressive. Uh, yeah. Beyond the fact that the team started to look like something that had an identity here, it was it was really inspiring to watch that second half. And again, you can nitpick the first half, but as I, I don't want to underemphasize what Jimmy said there. If this team starts two or seventeen, and you ask someone who didn't watch, did they win from three? Everybody would say no, and they were within six at halftime thanks to all the free throws they generated. So the way they stuck in it throughout, never got down by more than 12 or 14, was pretty amazing. Great resolve here for a team that, you know, we we can talk about all the talent and depth issues and this and that. The resolve issue was real too, and Brad has said it over and over again. When stuff gets tough, they folded this year, and tonight they didn't. Yeah. Um, All right. I'll be the guy. of course you will. No, Bobby wants a Kemba apology, Cam. I want to know why. Yeah, that that closed to the third quarter. So and that's what it takes. Yeah, and and <laughs> it's the story of his whole season. What's his final line there? Six of fifteen, bad efficiency. You're gonna look at this year in his career and say, "Wow, that was just a rough year for Kemba." But these moments that he has. These stretches where he gets going, gets downhill, finds a shot, or just has an otherwise big finish to games that have stolen a couple of games for this team. It's still important. I, I mean, he's doing things that avoid making him dead weight from a production standpoint. So you're going to look at the numbers every single night and say, all right, not a good Kemba game. But he still has these moments and even his, his compete level on the defensive end of the floor that yeah. still makes him immensely well, useful. Yeah, the compete level, nobody's ever argued. Even the and passing. He, and I he had that had terrific a stop game. at the end of the third where he played that great defense, takes it end to end. That's one of the, that was a, a real Kemba highlight. But again, it's uh, these games, you know, like these, this is a regular box score for Kemba nowadays. You know, you just got to live with it. It's, it's it, you know, it, this looks a lot like a lot of his games recently. 
Yeah, uh, that's why the, I don't think it's apology cam worthy, Bobby. I don't know. Man. Well, certainly not. I was just controlling Bobby a little bit on that. But again, if I went, <laughs> you just want to shoot it, down that one. If it took me three months to go on the just play two centers and start Rob Crusade, I've been on the Kemba bench crusade for about a uh, you know a month or so now. I still am saying it, it not as a demotion. I honestly wonder whether or not kicking him to that second unit when Fournier back is a bad idea. I'm just saying so. it. Okay. I'm just going to keep saying it. I think he's ideally suited. I think he is more of a specialist and a role player at this stage in his career for what he's able to do to come in and be an instant offense sort of guy that can just shoot with no conscience and impunity and whatever happens, happens because you want to see that. I, 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 I still... The more I see, the more I think it. Uh, and and again, you know, I'm not just using this game as a, oh, he was inefficient, send him to the bench. I just think that's who he is. He's a guy who you, he's a shoot, shooter's got to shoot. He's got to get into those rhythms. I I, I want to see him come off the bench and just friggin' jack four straight shots, five straight shots, and see if it's going and flowing for him. I think it's harder to do with the starters because he is forced to be deferential with Tatum and Brown. But again, that's, that I've been saying it. It's that my opinion hasn't changed. I'm wondering if anyone else's has. It hasn't nope. changed, but it hasn't changed. Not yet. Sherrod, Sherrod's a no, Joe Sway's No, it's Joe Sway's point that, that he said not from yet. the beginning. They don't have a full bench. Or Jimmy said this, too. It's not rec league. <laughs> They're bringing in five guys off the bench. It, like, it's just never – and yeah. especially come playoff time. I look at this rotation, and it's going to be, let's say, Thompson and Fournier off the bench, and everyone else is going to stagger for the entire game. Uh, you know, Tatum, Brown, and Kemba will probably play full games at this point. I didn't notice this against Minnesota. He played 39 minutes. I know. So, but look at it. a Tatum smart Rob, you know, I mean, a, a Kemba smart Rob uh, starting unit. Just the shooting issues you have there. I know Rob creates some space for guys, but it's just it's just a remarkably inefficient offensive unit for your first unit. So you're almost stuck relying heavily on uh, Jalen and Jason there. And I think that's where they fall into bad habits. I really wonder if spreading it out isn't a th isn't worth it. I, 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 I honestly, I think it's I think it's an obvious move, but it, it's it, it's feels like it's taboo to bring it up because everyone's like, you can't bench him. He makes a lot of money. And we were talking about this on the thread. I don't know that that matters. I, you know, well, I don't think it does. No, yeah. I, don't, I, don't I, I, I think that the, yeah. to me, that the bigger thing that that matters, at least to me, is if you go at Fournier in that group, here's the thing. You got to see what that looks like. And we really haven't had that opportunity. And we know that Kimba doesn't play in back to backs. I think they've got three or four more. So presumably Fournier will be in that first group. You'll get a chance to see what that looks like in at least two, three, four different games. I love to see it. Yeah, I would too. And that gives you at least it's a small sample size, but it's a sample size nonetheless. Well, you know, he won't. He's going to start Grant or something and keep Fournier <laughs> in the second unit. You know it, right? And I, I, and I yeah. hate that. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. Because because I, I think that's, to me, is one of those things that you shouldn't just whip that out in the playoffs for the first time and get a look at when you've got a number of regular season games where you can get a look at that particular lineup and it not be this whole disruption type thing. Kimba doesn't play back-to-backs. He doesn't play. Slap Fournier in there. Move your boy Peyton up to the role that Peyton Pritchard has been in pretty much most of the year as your backup Slap point guard it up. And, and see what that looks like. Right? See what it looks like. I don't and, and, and look if it looks great, guys, then you tuck it away and maybe you whip it out in the playoffs. Maybe you won't. If it sucks, guess what? You realize that now before you get to the postseason that that's probably not a good line. Yeah, for us. it's like me talking to my daughter at the dinner table. Like, try new things, okay? Just try, <laughs> try it. Ease. Yeah, you might like it. You might like the carrots. You like all of these ingredients separately. So what if I roll them into a burrito? Like you'll like it. Like eat it. It's good. I think, it's delicious. I think we'll find out a lot about this. Food. It's we'll nutritious for about, you. It's so we'll good. Find out, we'll find out a lot more about Kemba this week, especially throughout this West Coast road trip. I do think that's very significant. But again, I mean, I talked about this last week. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that Peyton Pritchard is sort of dried up a bit. His offense, at least, his scoring. Uh, I think if you if yeah. you had that going on. I don't think John will be asking for this right now. But, you know, to, to your point, to have more scoring off the bench because, you know, 48 is not out there, you know, to, to mix it up a bit, yeah, I, I'm not – I'm open to the idea. But, again, I don't think you – you, you you don't call it a demotion, but I don't think you would go out and, and demote Kemba. It's not a demotion. Yeah, but it's – but it's it a reappropriation. You have right. to let him, when you, you have think to let him go about ice, it as a demotion before right. before you make a, a, a drastic move. Okay, let's call it that, right? Let's call it a drastic. It's change. Not, I, okay, not a demotion, but I think he has to go ice cold before you do that. He's not quite there yet. He hasn't been spectacular, but 
again, he's not quite but there yet. I don't know that it's the case. Like I said, is when 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 Gordon got moved to the second unit, Gordon Hayward. You know, I don't think it was a demotion. It was this second unit needs Gordon Hayward. They need a guy who can have the ball. You know, move it. You know, uh, you know, be 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 more of a primary ball handler in that second unit offense. Help facilitate. It makes sense for me. It makes sense basketball sense. It's not a demotion in the same way that we were talking about all year where I was obsessing over Rob playing more slash starting. And it was, who cares who starts? It matters who this right. and that. But my point with Rob was, I want to see him with the starters. I think it'll help him. My point with Kemba is, I think it'll actually help him. Uh, and I think it'll... It could, uh, yeah. Yeah. It that, could. That's why. You almost, you almost want to having, see... Not, not having to see Fournier with the starting lineup, but it, it, it crushes the Celtics right now. Or at least for, for uh, Brad Stevens to, to get a grasp of how that starting unit can really benefit from Fournier you know, in comparison to Kemba. I mean, that's the thing. He doesn't have that opportunity to mix and match or at least right. to compare both uh, with both players and, and, and do do his Brad thing, you know, do the math and do all the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, the, the stuff that, that's not on the, the, the classic box score, right? I mean, right. he's going to have to go through his, his analytics and do his homework. Without Fournier, he's not able to experiment and, and find out what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh, no doubt. Let me uh, let me once again. I know everyone gets tired of it when I do it too too much, but I do want to mention to people: 10, 15 minutes or so. Um, Sherrod and I are going to head over to locker room, and uh, the other guys are going to trickle over as well. Um, so if you haven't done it already, do it. It's a ton of fun. We're just going to continue the conversation. Uh, leave a few extra fun nuggets there that we can discuss. Um, you know, uh, with the with the rest of the gang. But we also want to hear your questions. So people here in the chat. Uh, who are offering their comments. We love that, but we also love to hear your voices. So again, Locker Room, it's sports only app. It's free. Uh, it's an audio uh, situation. You just download it, hop on, boom, there you are. Request to speak. We put you up on the platform. You talk um, and we get to know you a little bit better and you just join the conversation. It's a lot of fun. So we will be there right after the post game show. We call it Post Game uh, Overtime. Uh, it's a clever name, right? Get it? <laughs> oh, like whatever post game ot like we said it's the after party um and and we will just continue the conversation over there uh guys moving on uh i think josue you were talking i'm uh I, and i cut you off there no that was it i mean uh i think bobby about the about the chime in here about the uh about the whole kemba the, the yeah kemba i was gonna say yeah. that the other things you have to consider here yeah. is fit within the starter starting defense which i still think is a good fit even though there's deficiencies there that hurt him those deficiencies would probably be presented a little more uh, sharply with the bench unit and his passing which another game like this where he's rolling in the pick and roll action and finding guys on the wings getting tatum and brown on cuts that that's become a better attribute of his as he tries to find his fit throughout the flow this year as well. Uh, so there are questions about his long term fit here. You do ultimately have to decide like where is he going to fit in here if he's staying for two more seasons beyond this. Uh, I think you get to those when they come. At this point, as I said earlier in the show, the rotations are set. I think they look really good here, and he's still a better fit. I think with these starters than he would be, you know, trying to lead well, the bench unit you know, on his lonesome. Yeah, well, so we did. Someone put this up here, and a lot of people are talking about it. Uh, and I do want to uh, uh, discuss it. We might as well we talk about it, yeah. Well, no, we had some really interesting chats prior to uh, tonight's game about Kemba. I'm going to hold that for locker room, okay? We got a couple of really fun trade proposals, one that Bobby um, had thrown out there that he got from some, I think it was Bleacher Report. Off-season yeah. off consideration for Kemba, would you do it? Would the other team do it? I do want to Bring your ideas, your too. Everyone bring, in the chat all bring, day is, trade Kemba, trade Kemba. Yeah. Well, let's hear some ideas. Bring your ideas we will mm -hmm. talk about it in locker room because we had a really interesting conversation this uh today on our little uh pre-game uh text thread um so that's something i want to hold for locker room so we will continue that convo um we did mention again romeo uh i know he's one of my pet projects but you guys thought he was uh, a little better tonight right there was you like Definitely to see better. you're always looking for the baby steps right like we did it with neesmith where it you know he does something and you're like okay that looks <clears> more <throat> like what you want you know little thing with romeo that little finish with the end one again it's small stuff but like i do think he's offense a good rebounder too he's a yeah. really active rebounder his defense he came in he drew a really great charge there in the post yeah, by moving moving yeah. his feet really quickly there so i mean his ability to keep defenders and uh, people in front of him on defense is real but it's i'm looking for those glimpses of offensive hope and like i said just the ability to finish through contact like people forget like 
he was that was his game. He was a really good finisher in high school and in college around the rim. And you want to see if he can unlock that, if he can find those moments where he's just got to attack and go. Uh, well, he was the one who went to the basket there straight in transition that drew the, uh, you know, the hard file from Grant, uh, you know, when, when Grant came in there. Right. Um, but you want to see him just go because he can do that. He can get up there and he can finish through contact. He's nifty around the rim. I want to see a little bit more of that. So, but I mean, little baby steps here. I liked what I saw tonight. Well, the big thing that he's doing that I think is is really jumping out is his defense. Uh, and that's going to get you on the floor every day, any day, when it comes to Brad Stevens. Is that Jimmy with the, with the potato chips? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's freaking, you, know. you already know. You already I know. muted him. I muted him. <laughs> no, but but he's, he's doing locker. all the little things. Yeah. This locker that he room has to rest with the, chip, with the bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Well, anyone well, joining the locker room? Anyone I had to joining my locker headphones room? in. Everyone don't was like, do oh, what Jimmy does. You. Don't let Jimmy be your locker room role model, okay? Uh, He's ahead, your anti-role model. That's yeah. what he is. <laughs> go um, ahead, Sherrod. Sorry. No, but, but, no, but Romeo, hey, you might not let you in, John, after that. Yeah. Uh, Romeo is doing all the little things to get on the floor. And, you know, we talk about the, the and one that he, he had. But remember – you're going to have to live with some not so great moments. Like he had that offensive rebound, kicked it. He, then he pulled it back out, took a three ball. That was an air ball. But the fact that, again, he's involving himself in the offense, little bits and pieces here and there, that's a positive thing to see because they're going to need – he doesn't have to go out and score 20 points, but he can initiate some things at the offensive end of the floor that can help this team. And for him to get more comfortable with that, that's huge for them going forward. Yeah, definitely. You know, especially for that second unit and just <clears throat> in those middle quarters where, where the Celtics have, have often, you know, really dropped the ball, especially with this the second quarter or coming out of halftime where they come out, you know, dry. That hasn't been the case. And I think someone like Langford, it, he's he's able to to blend in with everyone else. You know, he's not one of those guys that's going to, you know, be a step behind on defense. I mean, he's already proven that he's able to just c come in. And, and, of course, obviously, he's not he's not able to, to play 25 minutes quite yet. He's got to get his legs back after missing the entire season. But, I mean, he's been impressive. I mean, from the very beginning, when he got that big block after being out the entire season, your, your very first couple of minutes you check in and you straight up, you know, like – not even showing much rust. I mean, that's that's a huge indication of, of maybe him always often in the gym or just constantly taking notes, you know. And, and again, I, I think someone – You mean like on that, that block? No, I mean, like, just being that ready, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Maybe not the block itself, but being being ready and, and being put in that spot and, and come up big. And, you know, on this West Coast road trip, again, the, the, the attitude with this team. and, and <laughs> I didn't uh, even say we, anything. When was the last time I spoke? Go ahead. <laughs> we, have to, we have to prove everyone wrong. You know, I, I just think Romeo, it's, it's, it really, it, he blends in with that. And I think a lot of his teammates, you know, that resonates with them. They're like, okay, Romeo, we see you. You know, those two charges in Denver, you know, that, that's, that's big. You know, I, I think he's a guy that, uh, again, I mean, Sherrod brought it up. I talked about it last season, like, a young, young Avery Bradley when someone just came in and he just gets it. You know, I, I see the same thing with Romeo. That's what uh, the reason I was bringing it up. Anybody see Bridges? Uh, that was Dunk unreal. The other yeah. night. And I was like, that's the guy Romeo blocked with two hands. You know, that friggin' that was maybe poster of the year. Wait, wasn't that, uh, to was that today? Yesterday, I think. That was, yeah, it wasn't today. There was one today. There was. Oh, was it? I don't know if I forget who it was, but there was an unreal dunk today. Unreal. I'm still music. leaning towards that Anthony Edwards dunk uh, a couple that was weeks ago. Also oh, unreal. Man, dunk of the year. That's that's my dunk of the year so far. There's, there have been some good ones the last couple of weeks though, for sure. But that Anthony one... Edwards could not help but la could smile immediately after that. <laughs> well, the, the first thing he did was he looked up at the chair. Yeah, he's like, I need to again. see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's everyone's looking their face around him, just like making that the stank face. Like, yeah, oh. the stank face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's good when the when like the opposing bench reacts, and then they're like, oh, I know, right? We shouldn't react, yeah. but we can't. Yeah, Bridges was saying, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. I always want to say real quick, listen, the, the about Romeo, I mean, he he fills their biggest void this season was that, you know, backup wing guy that everyone's been saying the Celtics needed. Now, obviously, you've got Fournier, too. So you might be adding two serviceable, at the very least, serviceable players for this stretch run here into the playoffs, which is, you know, exactly what the doctor ordered, exactly what everyone said the Celtics needed in the offseason. Instead, they went and they got Thompson, um, which – 
I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people liked that signing, including myself. So I'm not going to go back and say, oh, they shouldn't have done it. But yeah. it was clear early on that they did they did have a void there at their position. And then Romeo, just, it was like, where the hell is Romeo? It was like, he he was, you know, there, literally there are conspiracy theories that he was dead. So, I mean, that that's how out of the picture he was. Who started this. those, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who started those. Really. That was passive then, voice, huh? Then it was hologram, and now it does appear that Weekend at Romeo's. A lot, weekend at Romeo's. It appears he is alive and well um, and, so, and, 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 and contributing. So, honestly, like, anything they can get out of this guy down the stretch here is is all good. So, a plus yeah, I love the guy. off the bench. Ben, I, bench, I, players, bench players love that plus minus stat. Um, I, I know they do, and that's how they, you know, that's how a lot of them, you know, value their, you know, time on the court, and that's how they, that's how they make their case for more playing time. Is how, they're not the focal point of the offense. Of the defense, that's what the agent says. Yeah. Exactly, the, exactly. So, you know, those that that shows you that when he's out on the court, at least today, good things are happening. I, I we already went over the Avery Bradley comparison that Gerard came up with, which yeah. is encouraging there especially since Bradley didn't do all that much on the offensive end early in his career either uh, so I, I'm not thrilled if he has to play a significant role in the playoffs because I think between Smart, Brown, Tatum and Fournier they have enough on the wing to spell playoff minutes outside of maybe like four or five for Langford uh, but if he's the next guy there say one of them gets yeah. banged up it's well, not a terrible option. But, it's no, probably Jimmy, better than any of the other guys. Jimmy, it's less that it's it's less it's it's less spelling those guys. It's more if you want to be playing those three wing lineups, which I know they like, it gives you the ability to do that. So it's having two it's having two other guys on the court, Fournier Tatum or Tatum Brown, along with Romeo, I think does different does does some good can potentially do good things for you they couldn't do it at all and if they were ever thin or they got into that second unit you were getting semi minutes and, and and needing to count on him for offense now you're adding fournier and romeo it allows you to play more three wing lineups or kind of small ball lineups with maybe granted a five you know um or, or things like that or even no center and get away with it against switch everything yeah, lineup. And, and that switchable, that switchable lineup with smart at the guard and you know they love that they're they're you know so again romeo Romeo makes that more possible. Again, he's not the drop off, obviously, between Tatum Brown to Fournier to the next tier is still significant, but ultimately it comes down to if you want to play those types of lineups, it's Romeo over semi. And I think it up it's an upgrade because uh, I, I just I like what Romeo brings and can bring a little bit more personally. And I think defensively, he's every bit as good, if not better than no, Semi. No, I right mean, there's now. no question you know? he should be better than Semi. He was a he 14th should be, pick, and Semi was a second rounder. So, yeah. yeah. He should be. But again, there's some people, I mean, like I said, Semi is the kind of safety blanket. I'm the most encouraging thing to me is that, is uh, to me, it's Stevens. He, he's not really one to embrace the unknown. Um, and well, he knows what he brings defensively, and, and that's the fact Stevens, that he's playing no. him, the fact that he's playing him, uh, means that he has a little bit, and he is at least confident that he can hold. We know he's confident he can hold his own defensively, but the fact that he's willing to embrace Romeo here and and to give him some minutes and to let him develop, I do think he can make a difference. Um, you know, some difference down the stretch. Uh, this is going to be my five minute warning, guys, and we're going to wrap it up on this side. Uh, ish, uh, Jimmy and Josue and Bobby, um, you know, are going to keep it going for a little bit longer here and then hopefully bring some more of you guys over. But Sherrod and I are going to head over uh, shortly over to Locker Room and we're going to start the chat with you guys. The room is open. The link is in the chat, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's, it's up. It's <clears throat> up. Um, so, guys, that's the link. Once again, a locker room. They are our sponsors. Okay. We're doing this after every game. We're going to do post game chat for about as we are now an hour or, you know, depending on the game, we could go longer. Um, and then we're going to head over to locker room. We're going to chat with you guys for a little bit as well there too. So uh, we are definitely going to talk about Kemba and the off season uh, and any thoughts you have uh, regarding tonight, Bobby just left. Bobby's so excited Bob. to ship Kemba out of here. He's like, I'm out. This, this is the like, last idea. I did this last time too, and I said, I'm gonna go, I'm going to locker room, and Bobby left. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped the gun. Bobby. He keeps doing that. I'm like, I'm no, excited. You, you stay. Discipline, buddy. You stay. JJB, we up yeah. next. He's like Rob. <laughs> He's just running out there trying to block shots. Like he just wants to just <laughs> just hold your position. Young Rob. Uh, young Rob. So we're heading over there, Sherrod. Before before I before I boot you and you head over, any uh, any other uh, thoughts on tonight? No, this was a good win. It was a good team win, and they did it with defense. That, that to me is the one takeaway I had that to me matters most. That they didn't rely on shot chucking to chalk up a win. 
Uh, they don't. They haven't had a lot of games mm-hmm. like that. And so to me, that's a good sign going forward because if you're going to shock the world and ha- make a deep playoff run, which nobody but those in that locker room feel is possible, you're going to have to get it done on the defensive end of the floor. And this was a good sign in that direction. Definitely. Yeah, agree. Um, guys, again, I'll let you guys kind of roll with it a little bit here, but we are going to boogie uh, and, and head over to locker room. So, again, come hang with me and Sherrod. Anybody here, hang with Jimmy, Bobby, Josue, and then come over and hang with all of us. We're all going over. Um, yeah, we won't be here it. long. John usually texts us, get the hell over here, like after a couple <laughs> minutes. So we'll be hanging out for a bit, and then we'll, we'll, we'll save John in the locker room. Yeah, you yeah, saved me. He's up next. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, – Everyone, get your questions up. Yeah, yeah, I love it. You guys get excited. You get empowered. You know, I get, um, I get in. absolutely. We're yeah, gonna throw some. The we'll throw some que- we're gonna throw some questions up here too to wrap up our show, and then the ones we can't get to here, we'll we'll bring them on over to locker room. Yeah, and Joe. So. Yeah, and Joe Sway's loving it. Joe Sway's the biggest locker room fan out there right now. Big <laughs> locker room. Boy. I wa- I went in the locker room earlier today, and Joe Sway was just chilling in the locker room, just like bouncing from room to room, <laughs> just like <laughs> holding hey, court. Jimmy. High Holy five. Yeah. A, lot of, yeah. a lot of stuff going on, you know? He came out of the visitor's <laughs> locker room. All. I'm like, what you doing over there, bro? It's a CLNS locker room. I know, I know. Again, we're doing this after every game, you know, uh, as we said. Uh, so we're going to boogie. Sherrod and I heading out. Uh, we'll see you guys over there. Otherwise, those of you hanging out with Jimmy, Bobby, and Joe Sway, come on over a little bit later. We're going to be up for a bit. So, guys, enjoy the rest of the show. Sherrod, let's head out. See you, boomers. Cool. We'll, be, we'll, I hate still you, beat you, we'll still beat you over there. We'll still beat you over there. I can't figure it out. <laughs> it won't let me log on. It's What's my password? Work. It's not working for me. I forgot my password. All right, Bobby, I, I texted you the, the bridges dunk. Do you have it? Can you put that up? Oh, no, I, I didn't see it, but I'll work on that. In the meantime, can we can talk about <laughs> – He's not going to work on that. Look at him. He, everybody, just the way needs to see, everybody needs to see this Miles Bridges I didn't dunk see from, it. Where did you send from it? From today. It's in a group text. It's in our group text. It's just a tweet. It's just a tweet that I. Oh, that's gonna be I tricky, but just, I'll, I'll work I on it. Just, oh, I thought you could just grab the. Oh, you want me to share my screen? Yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. That'd be better. Yeah, do let's that. See this. Everyone needs to see this dunk. Today. Right I think this is the, this might be so, the new dunk of the year. I know that the. Uh, in real time. Yeah, you got it. Anyways, yeah, chill in this chair all day. Get stuff done here. Just wait. Where, where, like, where are so you? This, like a. So this is Asian, like a Asian like. No, a buffet like, restaurant or something? It's like an upstairs, like a little, little porch. Little the, uh, to my my the, parents' place. Feng Shui in that room is on, looks yeah, unreal. Yeah, this is where it's at, man. Jimmy, you know? That's a great the, word for it. That's exactly what it when is. The sun's, when the sun's coming through, it's a nice spot to be in. All right, here we go. Here we go. I don't know why it's in French, but it is. Anyway, dude, hold on. Hold on. A, Nobody look. Bobby. Bobby. Oh, yeah, you gotta God. zoom in on that. Oh my God, dude, you gotta like go big on it, bro. You gotta go big. Pause this. Pause. Yeah, you gotta this. pause it. Jeez, dude. All right, start <laughs> over. Start over. This is like my. This is like telling my parents how to work the TV right now. <laughs> Bobby, okay. start it over. <laughs> okay, I think I saw it. <laughs> hey, Bobby, what is wrong with this kid? <laughs> Bobby, are you speeding it up? What are you doing? <laughs> Can you not hear us? <laughs> no, I got you. I'm seeing yeah, it differently seen than it you guys, thing. I think. You're just ignoring us. All right, this was an epic fail. Well, anyways, no, I hear you perfectly. You guys get I, the pick. You guys get the you idea. You guys haven't seen it three times already? Come on. We're seeing it. It's Where's all your like, reaction? It's all like jumpy and poor quality. This is did not. You killed the guy. That's all you need to know. And look at Lamelo Ball <laughs> looking fresh. It everyone is, Shane. Everyone is concerned flat. for Clint, way, Clint Capella. It should be a slow mo every time. <laughs> what a shame! Injuries suck. That team, that team could have been the most fun team in the East. We've talked about it. If the Celtics kept sunk in, pretty that, fun, man. I, think I don't still... know. Was that was that game against the Celtics fun? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> last Sunday. What, no, but uh, I, they're gonna. They're have now. Presumingly, so gonna, presumably gonna get Hayward back, something? right? I mean, we'll see. I mean, they're kind of close with that four weeks or so. You're right, though. I mean, it's tough. Injuries, injuries can really. Uh, that, that's why. We said, you know, don't – at least well, I think most of us said, if you're the Celtics, just put yourself in a position to be a tough out because you never know what's going to happen with injuries. I mean, we've seen Embiid already go down this year. Um, you know, look at the Nets. You know, they're so deep that they can That's afford the to break have, you have to catch. To have a guy go down. But, I mean, if, if two of the three of those guys are, are banged up going into the playoffs, I mean, really, it could be anybody's – it could be anybody's, uh, you know, conference to win. And when when the team raises the, raises the banner or when they raise the trophy, no one's – 
really thinking back on, oh, well, they only made it because of injuries. You know, history will just show who won the who won the title that year. And, you know, injuries are part of the game, so it, it is what it is. I see this too, and someone tweeted this out earlier. Celtics have the fifth easiest remaining schedule, uh, so that helps. They're going to see the Lakers now, presumably without LeBron and Davis at the, mm-hmm. at the end of this trip. So the breaks are already coming. Uh, they got a huge seven game homestand that they should have taken greater advantage of than they did. Uh, the remaining schedule here isn't going to be that tough. So again, they have to be that four seed. You got to get into that four or five, maybe catch a break with like Charlotte in there or something, or, uh, you know, where the other teams floating around that space. Atlanta would be tough. Atlanta would be real tough, but Miami, they'd be pretty tough too. But if you get home court in that series, it becomes just a little bit easier. Yeah, I think that's significant. I mean, look, a lot of these Celtics players, they don't even know what, what, what playoff basketball at the Garden looks like, you know, or at least to be on the right side of it. Well, shit, even Kemba. Kemba doesn't know about that. Kemba's never that's faced true. the playoffs. And he didn't see it last year. You know, he saw he saw uh, what, what, what a deep playoff run looks like from the, from the bubble's perspective. But I, I think even if it's limited capacity, which is probably going to be the case, you know, uh, it's still significant. Look, these guys don't hear you, you know. Like, some of these fans – you know, the other day, Bobby, right? I'm sure you can you, you agree with this. Like, you know, you pick the right time. There's no way the player didn't hear you uh, scream out a particular thing or a really good chant. Like, yeah, it's just it's it's you really connected that way. And also, it goes the other way around too, right? Like, so like players, they can fans can pick up on what you're saying, and you can you know how how clever uh, Celtics fans can be, right? Like, if they pick up on something from a an opposing player. That, that's easy for them to chant about like that can really get into someone's head easier now or or they can get really personal and, and, and say something that, that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna hit you that, and you're sitting like 20 rows back whereas that was impossible you know in, in a regular playoff environment so i think playoff playoff uh having home court it's significant for the Celtics if they can get it and of course this this uh this stretch is so important whether we're talking about that momentum going into the postseason or just the overall confidence of this team. Do you, do you agree with this? Because I don't. What? How about that? How about John Smith calling me an idiot and Bobby just being <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to post that. John Smith. Uh, it was a good dunk. It was definitely one of the dunks of the years. When your name is John Smith, you can pretty much say whatever the hell you want because there's no tracking of John Smith now. There's about a billion wow, of them out Jimmy there. Jimmy just went in. So, John Jimmy's Smith. Like, are you talking about, you talking about fucking John Smith? He's he talking about John right John motherfucking Smith right now getting in my grill about, <laughs> about Miles Bridges dunk. That was a good dunk. You couldn't see it because it was in 56K modem that Bobby's wow. had over there. This but is anyways, the kind of beef we expected. And Bobby never room. paused it. Yeah. He just kept looping yeah, it. Yeah, he was just like, again, it's like trying to explain to your parents. Like, you just want to watch a replay of something. It's like an all-day affair. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not worried about Miami if we see Miami. Um, That's a tough first-round matchup. I mean, it's, How it's, can it's you say that match. after what we just watched in September? <laughs> right. I know, I mean, right? Miami's the type of team that has the, the talent. Team. They have the talent to put it together for you know a number of reasons this year: injuries, health. Just I do think they over they overplayed in the bubble last year. I think everyone can probably agree to that. They aren't you know the best team in the East certainly, but um, they're a tough out and they play tough as nails. They play behind Jimmy Butler's sort of style of play and mentality. Bam murdered the Celtics last year. Now they have a new and improved Rob, and it'll be definitely interesting and to Thompson. see yeah. that matchup and Thompson. Um, so I, I certainly expect it to be a difficult series, but I mean, to say that I wouldn't be worried that that's, you know, a little extreme. Um, I think the Celtics can, can definitely beat them, but it would be a battle, you know, and that's, the type you... of, that's the type of a series that if that's a first round series, that just takes, it could take a lot out of you. Did you catch Brooklyn last night, Josue? I didn't, but I heard about it. Jeez. Quick, they, Kyrie got ejected. They got, they, they look terrible. Out. Yeah. We, we can do it. You want to do a Kyrie thing <laughs> now that John's gone? No. Uh, yeah, they looked the awful. Yeah, they looked what horrible. Exactly and defensively, they, they are not fixing themselves on the defensive end of the floor by bringing old Marcus Aldridge in. After the game, he said he was horrible on defense, and he had to go watch some film about it because he was so bad. Uh, the Lakers had no LeBron, no Davis, and they went in there and just dominated them. Andre Drummond was all over the interior. Oh, which is a weakness do. we've Trust talked been, about. Tress has been killing it. Really yep, he, he he beat them up. The Lakers. Uh, ben Macklemore yeah. came in for LA and had a huge game, and his I think it was his first game with them. So oh, Brooklyn, Harden's down. I mean, he'll be back for the playoffs, but he'll, he'll probably miss most of the rest of the regular season. Kyrie is now taking a personal absence day on tomorrow against Minnesota. 
So he's going on a hiatus again, it seems. Has he, yeah. Didn't he just come back from one of those? Like, I don't get it. It's like the dude plays once a week or he picks which he, he handpicks the games he wants to participate in. And then yeah. something like this where it's like, yo, your team could really use you right now. Right now, we just they just took a huge L. And, and, and KD up and dealing with again? an injury there for a little bit. So, again, mm. I, I thought Brooklyn was unstoppable coming into this year. They make that trade. They got even better. But there's still those question marks with them. I from a to mentality. Me it's just health. One, it's just physical, health yeah. If they can stay healthy, I still think they're damn near impossible to, to beat out of the East. Now, who they end up playing with again in the West is another story. But talent wise, I mean, this is the NBA has is, is always been about talent more than anything. And these guys are about as three of the most three of the most talented players in the NBA. Very rare. It's definitely to get the them. team you want to avoid round one. Very rare can. to to get a team of, of players together like that i mean it's happened a few times but you know this is the type of a team that if they can stay on the court there's really no reason to bet against them so it's gonna be difficult for sure and i i think everybody realizes that but you know health is the health is the you know great evener out there so we shall see and Kyrie sent out a tweet that seems to be possibly the reason he's stepping out of the lineup again here again i can't read his mind so i'm not even going to pretend to uh, so locker room. Did he do it in the uh, Star Wars font, or he did it regular? Wait, Kyrie's not playing. Is that what you said? Yeah, he's taking a personal leave again. Oh, I missed that. My bad. I didn't see. Yeah, that. he got ejected last night. He sent out a tweet about the situation he had with Dennis Schroeder, and uh, then it was announced today that he's not playing tomorrow for personal reasons. So we'll see okay. where that goes. Schroeder sure, got him big mad. Oh, Kyrie. Yeah, Schroeder. I'll tell you what, Schroeder. Schroeder tends to pick a lot of. I mean, I know him and Rondo have gotten at, at, gotten at each other's throats over the years. And well, that's like his. He like, seems to get under the skin of a lot of people. Sure. Yeah, he 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 like model his game after Rondo, and uh, I remember that way back. Yeah, when seeing yeah that. I think he was uh, he was a teenager, or at least uh, during the Celtics run that era, the Big Three era. He was he he loved all of that, you know. From I don't, I don't know, did he grow up in Germany? I don't know if he grew up in Germany, but he's German. he did. Yeah, he grew up in Germany, right? Yeah, so he used to take in all those games. He said as as a teenager, he said he was just fascinated by Rondo. From day one, from the first yeah. time we watched him play. Yeah. And man, he is has quickly become one of the most underrated players in the league. He's probably going to be one of the top free agents this offseason. Uh, people that were was up- an underrated signing by Lakers. I love that. I, I, I yeah. feel like, Bobby, I feel like maybe you didn't like that signing that much. No, time, it was you- a trade. It was a steal of a trade. trade, they, trade gave, okay. they gave up Danny Green and maybe like a set Because they lost Rondo and they basically replaced Rondo with, with him. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, After you know, that, they let Rondo younger, walk. Younger Rondo, right? So. That was the move of the offseason for sure. Uh, and they'll have to keep him now. They, he declined an extension with them. He's going to go to free agency. So we'll see. He... he he wants upwards of twenty-eight million dollars a year, so we'll see if he gets that. Uh, but he declined about twenty from them, so he's betting on himself. He should have been the sixth man of the year last year with Oklahoma City. He was great there too. He's been around a while. I can't think of a resurgence for a guy like this late in his career. He was with Atlanta forever. We remember those battles. Uh, so Lakers are still tough. We'll just see with them too. When you think about these teams in the West, who who catches a house break here? Is LeBron going to be back in form when he comes back? Davis, I guess they're coming back in two to three weeks now, so they'll be ready for the playoffs. But um, Davis in particular, I'm looking at and saying Achilles injury. That's a scary one to hear and deal with uh, in the middle of a season. So yeah, feels like this is a wide open year for anybody really. So still, you look at the Celtics, they're probably not a championship team, but who knows what kind of breaks they catch along the way yeah i mean listen the celtics that started the season certainly weren't i mean if they can continue to slowly turn things around yet around who knows i mean the playoffs are far enough away where really anything can happen they certainly need the momentum to, to change and it it's, seems to be starting to and like you say you get fournier back and if they can stay healthy and sort of rally together and if this, if they want to make it, you know them them against the world, then great. That's how it should be. That's how they should feel. They should be rallying around each other. The Grant Williams thing today was minor, but it was a sign of like that team unity aspect. Um, you know, that's locker room. That's locker room B probably uh, sticking together out there. So maybe they're you know setting the tone a little bit. So good to see. Anyways, um, we can bring this over to locker room now. I think um, yeah, if you guys have if you guys have iOS. Great, download the app. Come hang out with us. If you don't. Um, go 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 over to the Apple Store and get it. No, I'm just kidding. Hopefully they'll have the uh, the Android app out there soon. Get your game up. No. Yeah, hopefully they have iPad. It. Yeah, grab your iPad. Do what you got to do iPad. to get on Apple, and hopefully more people will be able to access it soon. So we'll see you over there. 
I'm sure Nick, Sherrod, and John are just beginning to talk now, 20 minutes later. Uh, so yeah, they're <laughs> we'll just go save the up. day. <laughs> All right, <laughs> See boys. you guys. We're back yeah. on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, late night. I don't know what. Oh, yes, sir. I, I promise you I will not be on that show, so you guys crush it for me, okay? Portland right, Trailblazers. It's going to be a good game. Then a big Lakers game on Thursday. So we'll see you guys for that back here. Subscribe to YouTube, all access, right. all that stuff. Podcast streams as well.